Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. I thought we'd have some fun today creating new brushes in a new way for your favorite applications such as Photoshop and Illustrator. So we have a brand new application that's on your iOS devices, whether it's your iPhone, your iPad, iPod Touch, called Adobe Brush. It's a free download. You just download it and immediately start creating brushes with it. Now those brushes end up in your desktop applications via the new libraries feature. So when you create a brush in Adobe Brush, it's automatically synced up to Creative Cloud in your library. Next time you launch Photoshop or Illustrator and you have your library panel open, you can access those brushes you just created. So let's take a look at how this process works. I've got Photoshop open here on my desktop. And I created a brand new library just for today called Adobe Demos. You can have as many libraries as you want. Once you have the library set up, it just says, hey, this library is here. You can drag and drop things. You can assign things to it from Photoshop. And you can also grab things from other applications. So in my case, I'm going to switch over and take a look at my iPhone. Now it's got the same library there. I'm just going to show it to you again here. Let's go ahead and uh, launch the folder. And from here, I'm just going to go ahead and tap on Adobe Brush. And there's the library. Again, I have the same pull-down menu to access the same libraries that we just saw on the desktop. Now from here, I can create a brand new brush simply by pressing the plus sign at the bottom. So we'll press the plus sign. Now I get a choice of using the built-in camera, grabbing something from that I've already photographed from the camera roll or one of my albums, or from my Creative Cloud Files folder, from my Creative Cloud Storage. So we're gonna do it a couple different ways. Let's go ahead and first use the camera roll. And once I bring up the camera roll, again, it shows me my albums. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my Adobe Mobile Apps album where I keep photos here for just this kind of stuff. And at the very bottom, here's a photo I haven't used in a long time, and I'm gonna use it now. And this particular photo uh, is just a picture of uh, flowers on a vine. Now, I get the choice of what kind of brush I want to make. I can make a sketch brush, I can make a Photoshop um, brush, or I can make it an Illustrator brush, depending on, of course, the settings. I'm going to go ahead and make it a Photoshop brush for now. Now, the next thing it is, I get to choose the angle, whether or not the brush is going to turn as I create it or draw with it. Um, that's pretty much it for this area of Photoshop. I get to also choose the crop. Uh, in which way the brush will be cropped as I use it. And I'll leave it the crop the way it is. I also get to do a refine. So if it had a white background, I could kind of take that background out, but it's doing a pretty good job. Um, it was already on a transparent background, so it's already extracting that. Then I can go into the settings and detail it even further. I can make the brush bigger, smaller. I can do minimum size if I want. I can also make it pressure sensitive to control the size or the flow of the brush. I can also uh, adjust the spacing, how far they are apart from each other or whether or not they collapse on each other. I can adjust uh, the scatter, which is kind of cool. And I can also adjust the jitter, which is um, even better. So I can have them turn and twist um, as I'm drawing with them. I can adjust the size with the jitter as well. And of course the flow, which is the transparency. Once I'm all set with my brush, I can then just go in and name it. So I'm going to call this the Vine Brush. And once I name it and hit save, it is now syncing that brush up to Creative Cloud. I see that I got the little check mark in the upper right hand corner. And even over here in Photoshop on the right hand side, the brush is already down on my desktop and ready for me to use. Now, before we go to Photoshop and use it, we're going to create one more, and this time we're going to create the brush from the camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap the plus sign. I'm going to choose camera, and then I'm going to go over here to my John Hancock, literally my John Hancock. And let's go ahead and capture that image. Now that we have that image in place, we'll go ahead and say OK. And same thing, I get to make a Photoshop brush, an Illustrator brush, or a sketch brush. We're going to go ahead and crop it and make it a um, Photoshop brush. And we'll crop it down. We can move the image around in the crop. We don't need all that extra headroom. And once we get it in place, uh, the next thing we do is refine it. Again, taking out that white background that it was on the paper, making it transparent, and of course going to our settings and controlling anything else. 
So I can make it larger, which I do want to make it larger. I can make it pressure sensitive, which in this case, that wouldn't make sense. I can adjust the spacing, which yes, I do want them further apart. Uh, if I do happen to drag it, which I wouldn't need to, no scatter needed, no jitter needed, and we are um, ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and name it my JH brush um, for my John Hancock. So you can make brushes of your signature. Now, once again, that's been added to my uh, library, synced up to Creative Cloud, and then back down to my desktop. So if I head over to my desktop now, and I grab my, or just click on the brush, it will automatically select the brush tool in my default color. I'm gonna use my Wacom stylus here. And from here, I can just go ahead and paint with my new Vine brush. Very cool to be able to just maybe use this for accents, little things around your image, and away you go. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is, of course, use the John Hancock brush. I'm gonna just switch my color here to black, and anywhere I need my signature, just tap, and there's my John Hancock. Need it bigger? Joel, just make your brush bigger, and tap, and you've signed your document. So, just that easy to create brushes for Photoshop. But if you're using a mobile app to do this, if you're using your iOS uh, device to do this, then why not take advantage of it on uh, Adobe Sketch as well, since you've already got a mobile device. So if you do have an iPad, you can go ahead and switch over here. Let me do this as well. I'll switch over to my iPad now. There we go. Here comes the iPad. And now that I've got the iPad up, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna launch Adobe Brush. And it's synced and brought in the same two brushes that I created over on the iPhone. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is gonna go ahead and add a new brush. And this time we're gonna add one from Creative Cloud. Now from here, I get to go in and specify which folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my Adobe Max folder. Now I can tap on the Rufus folder and we can find the full version of Rufus here that I happened to find out on the internet. So if you wanna just Google Rufus, Dirtzler, you can go find this image and play yourself. We can all make it like a montage, no, just kidding. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up the file here. And when I open up the file, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a sketch brush. Now we get to play around with some of the options that'll make this really cool. So first of all, let's go to the, um, uh, type here, we want to make this a ribbon brush versus a scatter brush. We do want to make it in color, which if you do make it a ribbon uh, brush, you get to make it in color. And instead of it repeating, we want to go ahead and stretch it. Now, of course, that looks totally weird now, but that's okay. We'll be able to use this in just the right way in a minute. Now, when we go over to crop, here's where the magic happens. Instead of uh, stretching him left to right, we're going to go ahead and tilt Rufus this way there we go and it still doesn't look good because we're stretching the whole thing but you have these controls for how what area of the brush you really want to stretch so we can say that we want to stretch from everything down to there so now that we have this in place we want to go ahead and crop it this will start to look better in just a moment here let's go ahead and straighten it out a bit crop it in as much as we can there we go we go to the refine same thing use our white mask to kind of get rid of that white background that he was on and we go to our settings and we can control anything else from here we can control the size of it uh, we don't need to control the flow we don't need to really control pressure even though we can uh, velocity is probably okay on the defaults texture is okay on the defaults so now we're going to go ahead and just rename this let's go make it our rufus brush and save it and there's our rufus brush and because we made that a sketch brush i'm going to go ahead and pop over to adobe sketch but before we do that we're going to do one more thing let's make one more kind of brush we'll again do it from the camera actually instead of the camera roll well yeah we can do it from the camera roll i think the images are there that i need oops not the panoramas let's go to the mobile apps here there we go 
and I want to make a brush out of my uh, logo. So we'll make this one for Photoshop and we'll uh, no angle. We'll need to crop it. Cropping actually looks pretty good as is. Uh, don't need to white mask it because it's already been masked. And we'll go to our settings, maybe pump up the size and go to our spacing and really space it out. There we go. Perfect. And, uh, and then we'll just rename it and we'll call this one the TW stamp. All right. So now that we have our brushes in place, we'll save that one. It adds it in. Now let's head over to Adobe Sketch. So we just launch Adobe Sketch on the iPad here. And once we're in Adobe Sketch, we can just go ahead and launch a new document or a new sketch here. Now, the way we access our brushes is up here in the, um, right next to the eraser is a new brush that we can, it's a charcoal brush, it's actually pretty cool. Um, but anyway, if we undo all this, we can go ahead and tap and that will bring down the brush menu and you'll notice up below the word brushes you have the brushes that are built in as well as a new my library brush my library change library one more time adobe brushes and there are my there are my brushes available for sketch so from here i can go ahead and tap the new rufus brush and as you might expect because we made a brush like that we can go ahead and draw a new rufus there we can draw a shorter version of him and we can just kind of have fun. <laughs> you will have a blast with this. Making brushes out of your favorite things, people, animals, pets, whatever it is you want. So in this case, I kind of like Rufus's work. So this is my paying tribute to Rufus, which is a pretty cool guy who can kind of uh, wave his way around any situation. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, tap one more time here bring down the menu and from here I'm going to go ahead and just grab my stamp and I can just go ahead and stamp my logo anytime I need it uh, and just kind of sign off on this image. Now if we head back over to Photoshop those brushes are here as well and for example we made that a Photoshop brush but Photoshop brushes can also be used in Sketch and Photoshop. So in this case I can go ahead and grab it as a Photoshop brush here in Photoshop and of course, um, wrong stylus. I was using Adobe Ink. Let's go back to the Wacom stylus and tap. And anytime I need my logo, just tap, tap, tap. It's there as a brush. So that's it for this episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. Hope you had some fun looking at what's possible with Adobe Brush, Photoshop, and Adobe Photoshop Sketch. So with that, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.